Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Jeffrey with Achieve Ed. Today, we're going to be talking about this article from the Wall Street Journal talking about college waitlists. The article is titled, Expect College Waitlists to be Obnoxiously Long This Year. Um, so we're going to go ahead and talk about this article and what it means for you. But before I do, make sure you guys go ahead and sign up for Emil Learning. They're a sponsor of this channel right now, and they're an AP study resource that has plenty of high quality videos to help you guys study for the AP exams that are coming up this year. And it's very simple to sign up. Go to highemil.com, click sign up, enter your email, and you are all set. You don't need to enter any payment information or anything like that. And if you use code ACHIEVE, you do get a free trial. Again, no payment information needed up front or anything like that. Just go ahead and sign up, use code ACHIEVE, and hopefully that'll help you guys study for the AP exams. All right, now back to the article. So basically this is saying that with students applying to more schools, admissions officers are struggling to predict who will actually accept their offers. And a little bit of background information first. So, yield is the percentage of students who actually go to a college over the entire like number of students that are accepted, right? So for example, a school like Stanford University, uh, their yield last year was around 68%, meaning that 68% of students who were admitted into Stanford, who got an acceptance letter, uh, actually chose to attend the school. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about yields later on, but just wanted to put that background information out there. And the wait list is uh, what colleges use to kind of um, fill up their class in case their yield is not uh, what they predict it will be, right? So say Stanford is predicting a 70% yield and they only got a 68% yield. So therefore they have to take that extra 2% uh, that they wanted to have. They have to take those students from the wait list, right? So that's how it works. Uh, it's just some background information there. But anyways, so this article is basically saying that uh, this year, because of the pandemic, students are applying to more colleges this year. They're saying that applications submitted via the Common App rose by 11% nationwide through March 1st. But the number of applicants increased by just 2.4%, meaning nearly the same number of students are casting a wider net. And the problem with this is that, again, Yield is based on what the colleges are predicting. If they can predict their yield well, then their waitlist, they probably don't even have to use their waitlist that much, right? But if it's very unpredictable, and it is this year because this massive increase in, you know, applications, right? Um, they're not going to be able to predict their yield very well. And especially during the pandemic, where there's a lot of other factors coming into consideration, like may maybe some students, uh, you know, want to stay closer to home, or maybe like, uh, students are going to be seeing whether the colleges that they got admitted to uh, will be in person or remote and uh, maybe they'll you know it'll, that'll affect their decision on where to go so just a lot of very unpredictable stuff um, and they're talking about how last year yields were like very very unpredictable due to the pandemic for example the article says that Yale University's yield for the fall 2019 entering class so the year before the pandemic was 69 percent but it fell to 55 percent last year uh, which was fall of 2020 when the pandemic had already started. So that's a huge decrease. And because of that difference in expected yield versus actual yield, um, they had to take a lot of students off the wait list, right? And so that's why you had people getting into like these top colleges off their wait lists in like July, right? Which normally like rarely happens, but because yield was so unpredictable, you know, that's what ended up happening last year, not just at Yale, but like at a lot of schools. And I know a lot of people who got off wait lists really late. Um, and basically this article is saying that like that trend is kind of going to continue this year because it's still very unpredictable. Um, the way colleges usually kind of predict their yield is they use years and years of data, right? So if they have data going back to like, I don't know, 2010, right? Then they can kind of average it out and see like, okay, what do we expect the yield this year to be given that circumstances are pretty much the same as previous years. But that's not the case this year because of the pandemic. We only have last year to use as a guide. And last year was even more volatile, uh, you know, than we had ever expected. So basically colleges don't know what to expect for the yield. They're kind of, I don't know, they're kind of just guessing at this point. And th probably the more likely result is gonna be they're gonna have to take a lot of students off the wait list because uh, the yield is just not gonna be what they expect. Something else in this article that I found interesting was this sentence. They say, every time students are taken from a waitlist and accept the new offer, they give up a spot elsewhere. That school turns to its waitlist and down the dominoes go. So it's kind of like a 
domino theory, if you will. Like once a student, uh, you know, accepts a waitlist offer, that means the previous school that they were going to attend now has a new spot open. So they have to, you know, take someone off their waitlist and, you know, the cycle continues, right? It's like a whole domino chain. Um, so again, just magnifying this problem of waitlists this year. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much a quick summary of this article. Go ahead and read it down below if you guys want. The link will be in the description. Um, but pretty much I just wanted to share this article with you guys for those of you that are uh, seniors this year that are like currently waiting for college decisions to come out. Basically, the takeaway here is if you get waitlisted, um, I would suggest that you actually apply for the waitlist. In past years, I might have told you like, okay, maybe it's not worth it because um, especially at the top schools, they rarely take students off the waitlist. But this year, because of the pandemic and because things are just super, super unpredictable, I would say you might actually have a shot at the waitlist. Now, like I said, during the summary of the article, um, the waitlist will be very long, meaning that you could see yourself maybe get off the waitlist in June or July or sometimes even August. I don't know, right? It might stretch out that long. So if you don't want to like wait that long or just be anxious for many months, Maybe you shouldn't apply to the waitlist, but if you really want to attend that school, it's your dream school, like I would say why not? Uh, you might have a shot. It's just very unpredictable. So any data from past years about like waitlist acceptance rates and any of that stuff, just don't even use it because this year is going to be very unique. So that's pretty much the takeaway uh, that you guys should know. And yeah, other than that, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you all for watching. Go ahead and like this video if you did enjoy it. Also, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already so that you don't miss a single college advice upload. And lastly, if you guys want a free consultation with our team one on one, go ahead and go to achieveedprep.com. Link will be in the description. You can schedule a 30 minute free consultation with our team to talk about college apps or anything like that. Um, but yeah, until next time, I will see you guys later. Peace.